before you watch this lecture, please watch my lecture on the second right-hand rule and the notation about into the page vector and out of the page vector. The link is in the description box below. Let's now discuss the magnetic field inside a toroid. Recall that a solenoid is a coil of wire. So what you're seeing right now is a solenoid. Solenoid is a coil of wire that generates magnetic field when current passes through it. Based on our previous lecture, the magnetic field outside the solenoid but near the solenoid is theoretically zero, but the magnetic field inside is equal to mu naught n times i, where n is the number of turns of this solenoid per unit length. Imagine if this solenoid is bent, so this end and this end, you try to bend them towards each other, and this end, try to bend this solenoid in such a way it forms a donut shape like figure. So imagine we bend the solenoid in such a way it looks like a donut. When the solenoid is shaped like a donut, we call this as toroid. The, the term toroid is actually a general term when you see this kind of shape. Let's look at the cross-section of a toroid to derive the magnetic field inside it. Here's the cross-section of the toroid. We already established that the magnetic field outside the coils are nearly zero, so we won't bother calculating the magnetic field outside this toroid but near the toroid. And let's use Ampere's law to derive the magnetic field inside the toroid. If we use the second right-hand rule, the magnetic field inside this toroid must flow in this manner. To use Ampere's law, let's try to draw an imaginary integration path with radius r from the center of the toroid. So beginning with Ampere's law, the magnetic field along our integration path that is at a distance r is obviously tangent along our imaginary integration path and they are equal because they are equidistant with respect to the center of the toroid. So assuming that the toroid is perfectly symmetric at its center, I can take this magnetic field outside the integral sign. And the enclosed current, we just need to count this excess here, this into the page current, and that's the number of enclosed current. If our solenoid consists of n turns, so I'll just literally need to multiply the current with n, capital N, the number of terms, with i. Now, to get rid of this dot product symbol, I'll just need to compute its magnitude in terms of cosine, so I'll end up with b integral of dl cosine theta equals mu naught n i. Similar to our reasoning with solenoid, notice that along our integration path, no matter what point we choose, the magnetic field is always tangent to our integration path. Therefore, they are parallel with each other and therefore the angle between them is zero. So essentially this is cosine zero and cosine zero equals one. So I'll just need to write b integral of dl equals mu naught N i. Now this integral here, integral of dl, is just the length of our integration path and based on simple geometry, this is just 2 pi r equals mu naught n i. And dividing both sides with 2 pi r, I'll have b equals mu naught n i over 2 pi r. So we now derive the magnetic field inside a toroid. Notice that the magnetic field for toroid is not uniform due to the dependence of the magnetic field with R. And apparently this R is the distance of our magnetic field from the center of the toroid. So obviously this R only works for a range of values that are within the toroid. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!